How do you simplify a complex scene? How do you build a good composition? How do you paint in a loose style? Well, I want to answer these questions and a whole lot more in this advanced watercolour demo. Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, watercolour painter, and I produce full-length video tutorials with commentary, which will hopefully help you improve your watercolour techniques and create some great looking paintings. So why do I say advanced watercolour demonstration of this scene? So this is El Charco in Arecife on the island of Lanzarote. Uh, one of my own photographs. Actually, let me just take you to the location. I've got a Google map here. Um, let's just zoom into it. So this is, actually let me just zoom out first of all. So this is the island of Lanzarote off the coast of Northwest Africa. And let me just zoom in the main town or city, Arecife. And then there is this sort of internal harbour called El Charco, which I think translates as small lake or puddle or something like that. Um, my photograph was taken from approximately this location here. So looking northwards. If I go to this satellite view, you can see there, there's all the boats dotted around. And this internal harbour, so the sea's out this way. Um, and then you have this internal harbour here, this tidal harbour, with some low, low riser buildings around the outside. Actually, let me just go to street view, see if I can zoom in and show you where this was taken from. So let me go here. Um, no, not there. Um, let me just go to here then, show a similar scene. There we are. So there's this nice walk that goes around this lake and views across the, the uh, harbour here. Lots of small boats um, in, in the harbour. I just go a little bit further right here. And can I go any further right? No, that's about the extremity that Street View's taken me. So I was sort of, if you imagine, I was more over in this location here, looking over to the left, um, this scene of small boats, craft, and buildings. So why is this um, quite a complex scene? Why would this be? an advanced uh, demonstration. Let me just go back to my picture. First of all, the background buildings, they're quite complicated. Lots of little details and windows and um, ground floor uh, entrances. There's, there's a few little cafes and bars over there. Then secondly, the myriad of boats, all these different sizes of boats. Look at them all. There's probably, I don't know, 50 boats or so, um, all different shapes and sizes, pointing in different directions. Quite complex reflections as well, uh, very soft reflections in some places. So we have here a different, a, a, a combination of different edges, which is uh, good to exploit in, in watercolour, soft edges, hard edges. So these are soft edges here. Do you see the reflections of the, the sky that we can't actually see in this photograph? Um, and then hard edges, well, the inside of the boats, the outline of the boats against, um, against the water, they would be hard edges. So a good combination of those. Um, that makes for a good watercolour. Uh, the other complication is that this is a bright day, not sunny day, bright day, it's overcast, um, which is quite common in the uh, winter period um, on these islands. And so you get, get a lot of cloud cover, um, but still very bright. So, and the, and the buildings are all very light in color, sort of an off-white color, I would say, not, not pure white. Um, some of them, more recently painted so they're going to be brighter. 
but that's the other that's the other complication is of, of these values with um, painting in Lanzarote, almost the sky. You can just see a thin sliver of the sky there. The sky is almost the same value as the buildings. How do we tackle that in a watercolor painting? Um, from a composition point of view, it's sort of um, it's all right this photograph, um, this photograph of mine. But I would like to change a few things, or a couple of things mainly. First of all, the horizon is too high. I want to bring it a little bit lower, um, uh, maybe to sort of this level here. So almost about a third of the way down from the top of the uh, of the paper. So bring the bring the horizon down. Make more of a feature of the rooftops. I'm going to have to use my imagination. Uh, these buildings over on the left hand side here just to imagine um, the skyline. But all the buildings here are sort of three, four stories maximum, so not not too high. And uh, yeah, just have a just try and create a, a, an exciting skyline. Second thing I want to change: make the boats a little bit bigger in the scene. Uh, and maybe just move around a few of them, introduce some different colours. Um, there are some boats that I will exclude. So, uh, for example, these these boats are on the left hand side here, where we can just see the bow of this boat that's pointing out there. That would be an obvious thing to exclude from the painting. Likewise, some of these really over here on the right hand side. Um, ex exclude those as well. I'm not going to bother. I could include this little bit of um, the harbour side here, uh, which I do do in some of my paintings. You have a sort of slight angle like that, or a slight angle like that, just to have some kind of a foreground, just very simply rendered, very simply painted. Um, could be could be a, a possible thing if you were doing a scene similar to this, but on this occasion, I'm going to exclude it. So let's see how we get on. I'm using Saunders Waterford watercolour paper for this demonstration. This is 300 grams in weight and is cold pressed surface, so it's medium roughness. Uh, you can get rough, of course, at the other end of the scale, um, and then very smooth. So I'm using the medium texture and a 3B pencil just to make the outlines of the main objects or shapes of the scene. So first of all, a very quick line or a few lines to give me an idea of the skyline of those buildings. As I said, I've got to sort of make up what uh, that that skyline would be because I can't actually see uh, the buildings in the in the top left uh, corner. So just a very quick impression of that skyline and then the far waterline. Um, just a few indications of where some of the boats might be. In my scene, I, I, this big boat in the on the left hand side, that's kind of a main feature of the painting. I quite like it in there. Uh, I think without one large boat or a few large boats, it would be a pretty sort of fairly stark scene. So I've chosen to to include that same same orientation and I, I'm going to paint it in quite loosely just give the impression of a, of a large boat there on, on the left hand side. Now some of the other craft there sideways on and some boats are quite simple to draw. They're basically rectangles. Also what I need to do here is connect some of these boats together, not have with all these boats, not have them all unconnected, all isolated. I've got to try and link them together just to make it look make it appear a little bit more realistic and pull the scene together. 
So very quickly, I'm building up now the composition and assortment of craft, not, not all the craft. Uh, there, there are too many really in there. Um, I'm putting a boat here just to fill in the right hand side uh, on, on that side of the painting, a smaller boat. But the main, the main, the main thing that attracted me to the scene was the sort of, uh, if I could describe it as the sort of glassy nature of the reflected sky, uh, the very soft edges that that uh, we've got, a reflection of clouds, a reflection of the blue sky. Uh, that was that was quite pleasing to me. That's that's what attracted me to it to try and um, render that on. On this painting. So now that's the first step. Second step, getting in the sky, uh, the, the, the first wash and getting in the sky. So this, this is a very small part of the overall size of the scene. So it's going to be done quite quickly. I'm using a mop brush here and in a sort of random fashion, just dragging the brush with the hair splayed out, trying to give the impression of this cloudy sky. And that came over the outline of the buildings. So I do, I do want a, a soft edge there. Uh, the, the values of the buildings was very similar to the values of the sky. So drag the sky down over the buildings and then the buildings themselves, well, they are an assortment of different shades of white and um, sort of an off-white color here and there some brighter areas maybe where um, it's catching a little bit of the the brighter light conditions but all very soft the brush i'm using is a, a jackson's mop brush mop brush square squirrel mop brush uh so it's quite a soft brush good water retaining capability and yeah just a a, a nice soft brush i, I need us i need a, a brush with a good edge to it and a good um point to it so as i'm doing here just dragging the brush in a sort of horizontal way across the the scene. So this is the shoreline, the far shoreline, um, in front of the buildings on the far side, and creating a few hard edges there of the far side. And we'll go in a little bit darker and define some of those shapes and objects over there in a little bit more detail. But very quickly, as you can see, my, my, my process is starting at the top, working my way down with this first wash and I'm painting around certain key objects, mainly objects that are going to be uh, kept, kept white or light, uh, obviously the boats in this example, uh, but this is the normal sort of process I, I would go through, starting from the top, going all the way down to the bottom. There is a slight slope on the uh on my my uh board here maybe about 10 degrees or so now down to the sea the all important sea and this will be done quite quickly as i've said one of the key things for this scene uh, one of the key things that attracted me to the scene was the reflection of the sky in the water. Lovely soft edges and little bits of blue, little bits of warm shadows as well. Uh, my, my source photo was quite dark, actually, down in the bottom left corner. I'm going to keep things fairly light and make a feature of the dark reflections of some of the boats. Now, the, the actual boat reflections are going to be quite easy to do because the the actual reflections are going to be darker than the color of the boats. I don't need I don't need to think about a light reflection in darker water. This is going to be 
easier from that point of view. So I'm building up different colors. Mixing and mixing. Probably spend, I probably spend as much time mixing as I do actually painting and just trying to get things right. The right ratio of uh, pigment to, to water color, to, uh, to water um, is quite key. So getting it right before I commit to putting the brush on the paper. I'll describe the colors. I'll mention the colors I'm using. So on my palette on the right hand side, I've got neutral tint to the top, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, which I'm using there, uh, quite a lot of yellow ochre in this scene, and then viridian green. Probably won't be using too much of that. Uh, cobalt green, cerulean blue in the middle, great for doing skies in my opinion, and cobalt blue, ultramarine blue coming down, alizarin crimson, then a Windsor red, which is like a quite a bright red, so I'm using cerulean blue there. Very important bluish middle band to uh, this, this reflective scene. Uh, back to the palette, then after that bright red, I've got a light red, then cadmium orange, and then lemon yellow right down in the bottom. I do also have a lavender in the bottom right corner, which I sometimes use. It's quite, an quite a nice opaque uh, color, sort of chalky nature to it. It's quite nice to um, include sometimes and mix in with other colors. Now, this middle band, unlike a sort of traditional wash where I, I would be doing lots of horizontal um, lines coming down the scene and you, you're, you've got this bead accumulating in your wash and you're using gravity to, uh, to bring um, that wash down. I'm just really going in quite a haphazard direction here, just daubing in the paint um, on the paper in a random fashion to try and give the impression of the clouds above. This is going to with watercolour, things do dry a lot lighter, so you have to go a bit darker than you think. Uh, I do sometimes make the, mistake, make the mistake of going in a little bit too dark, um, maybe with, uh, I mentioned the neutral tint in the top of my palette. Sometimes I overdo it with neutral tint, and uh, neutral tint, generally, that one doesn't dry too too light so got to be a bit careful with um, speeding up the darkening process by using that uh, that neutral that neutral tint color there that uh, neutral tint is similar to a Payne's gray uh, a lot of when I do demonstrations around local art groups uh, quite a few people haven't heard of neutral tint most people have heard of Payne's gray and uh, it's, they're fairly similar uh, Payne's Grey is probably a lot bluer. It's like a, it's like a dark navy blue. Now, what I'm doing here is um, lifting out some of the colour to this this wash I've laid down. It's still quite moist and damp, and I'm using the same brush. I washed out the brush. There's cleanish water on it. It's fairly dry. So it's going to suck up what, whatever's on the surface. I need to be careful not to leave any brush marks. If you understand what I'm saying to try and hide as, as I'm lifting off there, I don't want to leave any, any uh, uh, marks of the, the, the hairs of the brush. And I just want to keep things really nice and soft.
So this brush now is quite dry, not much water on this brush now. And I'm going in, the, the top of the scene has dried, has been drying quite nicely. Uh, it may still be a little bit damp in places, so I will, I will still get the, the soft edges. But the important thing here is that the talking about the ratio of water to pigment, this, this is a very dry brush. There's not much water on this brush. So um, it's not going to move around too much on the paper. So this is me now giving an impression of the buildings on the, on the far side. Um, and quite a, quite a, as I said, a, quite a complex, um, if, if you, the more you look at the buildings on the far side, the more you get fixated by all the balconies and windows and, and shutters, uh, and the, particularly the fur, the, the ground level details as well, lots of cafes and bars. But I don't want, in this scene, I don't want um, the viewer to be, be you, to, to be focusing in on the far side. I want the feature to be the reflections, the, the um, impression of the calmness, even though we've got quite a sort of active sky, quite a sort of vivid sky. If we were to see it, um, if, if ever you go to Lanzarote, it can be quite windy at times and um, quite quite uh, impressive skies and cloud formations. Um, but I just want that background to be fairly simple, so I've got to be careful not to overdo it. I've also got, also on the far side, we've got these palm trees, uh, these uh, Canary Island date palms, the which you find all over the islands. They're, they're native to this part of the world and of course all over the world now, but they are lining that far side. And I'll just make a feature of some of these. I'm not painting in every single frond, every single leaf. It's, it's too far in the background. I just want to keep things really simple, quite with the green, I don't, I can't really make it too vivid. So I'm toning it down a bit, thinking about the values, not too dark, not too green. If it was too dark and or too green, it would appear and come uh, too, too far forward, which I want to, I want to avoid in this one. So here's a bit of neutral tint, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine blue. And then going into the sea. So the sea is still, how can I describe it? It's still damp. It's gone past that moist stage, the initial moist stage where if you if you were to hold the paper against the light, it would be quite shiny. So it's just beginning to get a little bit duller if I hold it against the light. It's losing that sort of sheen on the surface. The, the, uh, the paper is quite damp. And now as I'm adding in these little um, dark reflections of the, in this case, the trees, um, and little bits of architectural um, details up there. It's going to blend quite well. You, you've got to you got you've got to practice with the with the the sort of uh, the ratio of water to paint. But it had to be again like um, the bits of the, the dark bits of the buildings in the background. The, it had to be thicker in consistency than the wash. If it was too if there was too much water on my brush, then I would have 
blooms being created, cauliflowers being created. I don't want that. I want to have a nice sort of soft, glassy appearance to the reflections of the darks in the background, um, these, these trees and so on. In places, the, the, the sea wash is actually drying quite quickly. Um, you've got to be wary of the, I guess, the humidity of um, where you're painting. Um, so if you're, if you're painting in, if you're painting in a room that's got maybe 20% humidity, well, things are going to dry a whole lot quicker than if you're painting in a room that's got maybe 60 or 70% humidity. Uh, so, and, and you'll, you'll, you'll know, um, watercolor painters will know how quickly things are drying uh, and whether they need to get out get out the hairdryer just to speed things up. So now, just adding in a few more um, reflections now to the boats. The danger of the background, the more you look at it, the more you're tempted to sneak in just another window but i want to keep it simple so this is probably i think of my paintings as going through about four main stages. So step one is doing the drawing, step two is doing the wash, covering over the main parts of the scene. Um, step three, which I'm sort of going into now, are the darks and really adding in um, a bit more depth to the scene uh, with those darker values and really concentrating on the, the main focal points of the painting as well, adding in shadows if it was a sunny day. And then the fourth final stage are, are little bits of detail here and there. So for example, on the background buildings, there are lots of little sort of aerials and masts and things on top of the building. So it might just go in with a, a finer brush and, and do that. Incidentally, if, if you want to help me out, there's a couple of things you can do, please. Number one, you can subscribe to my channel. It will send a message to Google um, that you appreciate my videos and you'll get notifications of new video releases, that little bell in the top right corner of your screen. Um, so that's the first thing. So please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already uh, to send that message to Google. And also, you can support me on a system called Patreon, which you might have heard before. Quite a lot of creators use the Patreon platform to share uh, content um, and, and their, their work in a format that is not possible on YouTube, in a more interactive format. So on Patreon, I, paste, I, I post... <laughs> I paste... I post exclusive content not available on YouTube and you can, it's, it's like a community. So you can share your pictures with lots of other watercolor artists. At the time of this video, I've probably got about 150 plus uh, members of this little merry club. And so you can share your pictures. I also do a, a live Q&A session, normally on a monthly or bi-monthly um, frequency, and just answer any questions and just discuss anything uh, on your mind about watercolor. And well, the main thing is monthly projects. So these monthly projects, this, this video here may be a monthly project, who knows? 
Um, so I set these projects. I try and think of different topics now and again. Um, we've just done one on snow. So being the winter in the Northern Hemisphere, I've done one on snow. And uh, yeah, so different, every month, different projects and you submit your painting and then you get a critique from me, hopefully giving you um, some extra hints and tips uh, to help you along the way. Right, back to the painting. So this very important bow here, quite simply done using a small to medium sized mop brush with the important thing here, this brush has to have a very good edge to it for getting those hard edges. Do you see around the, the, um, the stern of the boat and then the cabin, just defining the cabin. Uh, this, is, this is a loose way of rendering in that, that boat. If I was um, a tight painter, opposite to loose, if I was painting in a tight way, I would probably be spending 10 minutes with a very small brush trying to paint every single uh, detail on the cabin and railings and uh, the, 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 the superstructure of it all. I'm not. The, mine, I'm, I'm painting in a loose style. The reflections, as I've said, they're, they're fairly easy to do because you've got the colour of the hull and then you're going in darker with the, the hull reflection. And so it's a, a couple of values darker than the hull and as I was doing before, this is a, a thicker consistency, so less water here. And against gravity, this, these dark reflections are, are seeping, are, are merging into the hull, and we're getting a soft edge. I don't want necessarily a hard edge between the boat and the reflection. I don't want a hard edge along the waterline. With this brush that's got a good point, I can also give an impression of, well, there may be some um, back railings and something on top of the boat, just a few squiggly marks to, to uh, make it a little bit more realistic and uh, show a tiny bit of movement in the water as well. So the boats, I want a, a, a few va variations in the colours of these boats. So this one's going to be blue, a sort of a smaller boat, fishing boat. It's side on. You've got the cabin at the front. Uh, quite, quite a simple boat to, to paint in. A slight sort of curve of the of the uh, the, the gunnels of the, the the top of the hull, and a similar blue for a boat just lurking, just lurking behind that one. And then some of the boats in the distance. Just a just a sort of white. I, I I painted around these these boat shapes, and they're just basically blobs, if I could describe it as that. But maybe just the the application of a little dark line below them, um, which could indicate some shadow or a hole. Hopefully, it instantly shouts out that I am a boat. Um, there in the distance. And we can pick up little bits of accidental white white horizontal um, shapes and make something of those as well. Just by the application of a little dark line below them, can make uh, can make a boat. So I, I didn't paint in, I didn't draw in all of the craft, just a few main ones. Spend a little bit more time on those, and then those background ones, they're they're in the background, 
not too much detail. Now this is going to be a red boat here. Quickly do the hull. Just checking my brush, got that good edge to it. With a with a mop brush, with a squirrel mop brush like this, you always know if you've got too much water on the brush because after you've been mixing it in your palette, mixing some colour, and then you look at the brush, you can see how full it is. You can visually um, check it before you you start painting with it and yeah just just twisting it and checking that you've got that um that nice uh, edge there so mixing up some dark color for the reflections of the boats so these boats the reflections will be darker than the hull Also, a, a, a brush like this is, in my opinion, is the best brush for doing any reflections or shapes of waves. Because of the, the brush shape, it's quite good at creating that, that, that sort of very soft wave shape, if you see what I mean, if you are um, just lightly touching the paper and in a sort of either a horizontal way or just at a slight angle it does it does create quite easily some some convincing wave shapes darker color again for this reflection Keep going over. Anything in the background, just be quite light with the touch or if, if the paint on my, my brush is too dark, then I need to add a lot more water to it just to lighten things up. So now on to really the next step is adding in some finer detail to the painting. I've done all the big stuff, all the bigger areas. Now just to add a, a bit of detail to make things a little bit more convincing as regards what they are or making things a little bit more interesting. So smaller brush this is a synthetic round brush uh, i think the manufacturer is um, jack's hair or something like that um, and it's not too big it's actually not got too good a point to it i've used it for quite some time and with all the abuse it gets in my palette it's probably well, I know it's lost its point a long time ago, but it's just quite good for adding in these details with a fairly dry, this is a fairly dry brush now. Um, not too much water, picking up anything that's in the palette, something generally quite dark at this stage. And just here and there, I, I call it, I'm just sort of dancing around the picture. I'm just really, um, with a bit of practice, I'm just sort of, this, this is what I do in a lot of my painting. I just go around the scene with this smaller brush and just pick up here and there little marks. Could be windows, could be um, in, the, in the background there, could be little 
um, street light, street lamps, something like that, or uh, people perhaps in the background. Something that does make boats a lot more convincing is um, when they're resting on the water like this is first of all a nice line across the top of the hull so just below the gunnels um, a nice dark line could be a dark red could be a dark blue doesn't really matter uh, and also a water line as well now I'll be a bit careful with this because I don't want to destroy the we're, we're looking into a, a, a fairly bright scene and with some of the reflections of the boats particularly with a darker a darker boat and the darker reflection we almost can't see the waterline and we're just leaving it up to the viewer to think well, where is <laughs> whereabouts is it so I don't want to do um, too much of that, but I, I just I'm just adding a little bit, a few more marks, just to define the outlines of some of these boats in the distance. Add a bit of definition to the shoreline on the far side. Do use quite a lot of. Um, neutral tint also in this stage. With neutral tint, now I've got to be a bit careful, perhaps some of the buildings on the far side some of the detail was a little bit too dark i could have perhaps softened those a bit or had a softer edge to them uh, a lighter value um, but it's done now i very rarely lift off if i've made a mistake uh, i can't remember the last time i actually lifted off something in in a painting if i thought there was a mistake I would generally tend to leave it in there. Most people probably looking at it wouldn't notice that mistake if it was too dark a value. I, I, yeah, I would very rarely lift off. I'm often asked, um, do you, do you lift off? Um, but not often. I might do it with, um, with reflections. Uh, so if it's a light boat in dark water, I might do a little bit of lifting off there in the reflection to uh, to get a sort of soft reflection of a light a lightly colored boat in darker water so if there was a darker building behind the water is dark this this white say a white boat sitting in that dark water then i might do a little bit of lifting off as another technique i would use for the reflection of the water so few aerials on the buildings bits and pieces on the tops of buildings to just say this is these are buildings that's where the rooftops are uh, the sky ends there the the tops of the buildings are there just just here and there um, in other places they they kind of merge they kind of merge in together um similar value different colors similar value though if it was a black and white photo it'd be pretty similar in uh in value in value now there are some little white marks here and there we can make something of those they could be boys in the water they could be some something floating in the water, but just to pick up on some of those 
little, little accidental white marks. I will leave some of them in down, down towards the, uh, the bottom of the scene, leave some of those in. Uh, but there we are. So here is the M painting, El Charco, Arasifi, a little, little lake or a puddle. Uh, I'm sure uh, some of the uh, my Spanish viewers will correct me if I'm wrong there. El Charco, what the uh, the translation might be, but a very pretty internal harbour view, quite tricky from a painting point of view with the the values uh, a bright scene the the value of the sky very similar to the value of the building so quite difficult to pick out um, any sort of definition to those buildings complex background lots and lots of boats different sizes shapes different um, angles to those boats as well to contend with I moved the horizon down to include the skyline in my photograph. I didn't really know what the what the skyline looked like, but because it's in the background, I don't need to be uh, too concerned with that. Just just something, as you saw with my my drawing. It was just done in a few seconds, and some of the some of the pencil lines do show through. You might be able to detect it in in some of the the, the, the light washes so you can see a little faint line there of the uh, pencil line showing through but I don't mind about those pencil marks showing through the painting I think it just adds to a little bit of the charm of watercolour and a loose a loose painting style if um, if I do now if there are some pencil marks on some of the lighter areas I will rub those out I will get an eraser rubber and rub those out so for example um, on this boat here particularly if if the light was coming from the right hand side I would rub out a lot of the pencil marks uh, on the paper showing through on the right hand side so where the light is hitting the side um, rub those out maybe leave a few of them in on the left hand side. Sometimes I will add in a few pencil marks on top of a painting. So uh, you, I could have done this with some of these background buildings, just add in a few, maybe a few horizontal lines, a few vertical lines um, with a pencil mark or some masts or posts or things like that or details on the boat. So that could, be, uh, could have been another thing I could have done also. Boats very simply done. I made some of the boats a little bit larger to make the composition a bit uh, a bit more pleasing. But the main thing for me, the main thing was the the way I painted the the water, and to give an impression of um, a very loose and free and glassy nature to the the sky here. I lifted out a little bit when the Paint was um, was still moist with a dryish brush, so a lot of things in watercolor are down to timing. You know, getting it right when you're lifting off um, is far easier to lift off with with a drier a drier brush when the paint is moist. When it's getting drier, um, well, so the science is against you. It's more difficult. It's more of a challenge to to lift off that paint. So uh, yes, the, the very quick, my brush marks starting the top, um, the reflection, slightly darker reflection. So reflections are going to be darker. I kept a sort of creamy white um, nature to the buildings in the background. And then a slightly darker, slightly darker value for those buildings. Then the trees hard edge around the trees, softer reflections, a bit of wet in wet, or wet on wet, if you like, um, for those reflections. And then the sky, just alternating those blues, um, browns, and, uh, and little, little little bits of, of the paper showing through as well. And the 
boat reflections, quite easy to do because um, in the majority of cases, the actual reflection of the boat is a lot darker than, than the boat itself. So thanks for watching. Catch up with you next time.